Okay, so this is a tutorial on the peritoneum and the peritoneal cavity. So the peritoneum is a thin serous membrane which lines the abdominal cavity and a lot of the, vi the viscera within it. So it's kind of similar to the pleura and the serous pericardium. So a serous membrane is one which produces serous fluid. So we're looking here at a, at a model of the abdominal organs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cross section right down the middle here. And we'll, so I'll just switch over to a diagram and we'll talk about the peritoneum and the peritoneal cavity. So we're just going to slice right through the liver, the stomach, the pancreas behind the stomach, the colon, uh, the intestines, the rectum, the uterus and the bladder. So we're looking here at the sagittal section which I just described to you. So we've got the liver at the top, we've got the stomach that we've sliced through, the transverse colon, the small intestine, one of the loops of the small intestine. We've got the, the sigmoid colon rectum down here, the uterus and the bladder at the bottom. So the peritoneum is this membrane which surrounds the abdominal cavity and the abdominal organs. So the bit which surrounds the abdominal cavity is called the parietal peritoneum. And what you've got to remember is that the parietal peritoneum and the visceral peritoneum are at one continuous sheet. They're not separate things. This is what confused me when I was learning about it. So the parietal peritoneum lines the abdominal cavity. So I'm going to draw this on in red. So I'm drawing on the uh, parietal peritoneum. So we've got the parietal peritoneum in red, and you can see it lines the outside, so it sits on the it, it lines the abdominal cavity, and then where the where the peritoneum surrounds the viscera, so the organs within the cavity, it's called the visceral peritoneum. So I'm going to draw this on in blue. So now you've, we've got the red parietal par, uh, peritoneum and we've got the blue visceral peritoneum. So it's one continuous layer but where it surrounds the organs it's called the visceral peritoneum. So there's a potential space between the parietal peritoneum and the visceral peritoneum and this is called the peritoneal cavity and this contains peritoneal fluid. So you can see in this red shading in this diagram um, and this blue shading, this is the peritoneal cavity. So it's this, this potential space between the visceral peritoneum and the parietal peritoneum. So the peritoneal fluid contained in this space inside the peritoneal cavity helps to lubricate the movement and expansion of the gut. So you can see um, there's also these double folds. So where the, where the visceral peritoneum doubles up, so you can see between the liver and the stomach, there's this doubling up of the visceral peritoneum. It's given a special name. So the double, double doubling up of the visceral peritoneum between the stomach and other organs is called amenta. So you've got a greater amentum and a lesser amentum. And where the visceral peritoneum doubles up, around other organs and attaches it to the posterior abdominal wall. It's called a mesentery. So you can see this doubling up of the visceral peritoneum surrounding the transverse colon and attaching it to the posterior abdominal wall. And you can also see it surrounding the small intestine and attaching it to the posterior abdominal wall. This is called a mesentery. So it's important also to understand the difference between a retroperitoneal and an intraperitoneal organ. So an intraperitoneal organ is an organ that is almost fully covered by um, a layer of visceral peritoneum. And these these organs are not actually, there's no organ which is actually inside the peritoneal cavity, but some of these organs are suspended by uh, mesentries or by the doubling up of the visceral peritoneum 
so that they are inside, so that they, they're kind of within the peritoneal cavity, but they're not truly within the cavity. So the, the, the cavity, the peritoneal cavity lies outside the visceral peritoneum, um, between, between the visceral peritoneum and the parietal peritoneum. So the intraperitoneal organs are just wrapped entirely in visceral peritoneum and suspended into this peritoneal cavity. So you can see the these these organs which are suspended by mesenteries from the posterior abdominal wall are completely encapsulated in visceral peritoneum and suspended into the peritoneal cavity. But they are not literally within the peritoneal cavity if that makes any sense. So retroperitoneal organs um, are organs which lie behind the peritoneum or just have one surface uh, covered by peritoneum. So you can see the pancreas here and the um, duodenum. So these, these lie behind the peritoneum. So they've got only one surface covered by the, the, the parietal peritoneum. So they are called retroperitoneal organs. So intraperitoneal organs are completely or almost completely surrounded by visceral peritoneum but the retroperitoneal organs only have a part of their surface covered by peritoneum. So the peritoneum, the, sorry, the peritoneal cavity is divided into a greater sac and a lesser sac. So remember I mentioned a mentor. There's a lesser and a greater amentum. And the lesser amentum connects the lesser curvature of the stomach to the porta hepatis of the liver. So this bit here, these, this um, double fold of visceral peritoneum connecting the liver to the lesser curvature of the stomach is called the lesser amentum. And connecting the greater curvature of the stomach to the transverse colon is this fold of peritoneum called the greater amentum. And this loops down over the small intestines and curves back up um, to attach to the transverse colon. So behind the stomach and the liver, um, and shaded in blue in this diagram, is the lesser sac. So this is uh, a part of the peritoneal cavity which lies behind the stomach and the liver. And the greater sac is the larger part of the peritoneal cavity and makes up most of the cavity. So this is shaded in red. And this starts all the way up at the diaphragm, so you can see this, this um, bit of shading in red above the liver. So it starts above at the diaphragm and extends all the way down to the pelvic cavity. So that's the greater sac. So next what we'll do is we'll take a look in a bit more detail at some of the peritoneal attachments and we'll trace their path through the peritoneal cavity so we can get a better understanding of where these attachments are and what organs are retroperitoneal and which organs are intraperitoneal.